What is up, dorky fam? I know it's been forever between my work schedule, my class schedule, life in general. You don't care about that. What you care about is we're back, we're here now. As you may or not be able to tell, her head's blocking it. Somewhere back there is a Remy. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that, that sign right there. We are here for the pass holder preview of the Ratatouille Remy, ra the Remy's Ratatouille. Adventure. Yeah, that. Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. I don't know, pass holder preview. He says hi. I know, you've probably seen this a million times already. We were not popular enough to be invited to the press event. I know, I know, it hurts me too. It does, it really does. But you haven't seen it from us. So we're just gonna copy what everybody else did, but you can watch us do it. Come along. So currently the France Pavilion has its own set of merchandise, uh, including the spirit jersey. It's the Mademoiselle Mini Ooh La La. Has the cool little Eiffel Towers and the Epcot World Showcase on the back. And I don't know if it's a fluke and shipping or what, but France also currently has two sets of mini ears. They have the black and pink, and the blue on pink. The blue ones have the, uh, these things. The sequins all the way down the side, which I know hurts some people. The black ones actually say, Un bleu bleu de Paris, and they don't have sequins down the side. Also, if you're a fan of Marie the Cat, like someone that we know. Had to order that from Tokyo, BT dubs. Um, this is one of the few places you can get Marie the Cat merchandise. Because it's severely lacking in a lot of other places in the park. But it's the From Paris with Love and Un Bouzou de Paris. Ooh, and Dreaming of Paris. Do you dream of Paris? Do you just want it because Marie the Cat's on it? Yeah. That's what I thought. Looks like we're serving delicacies. What's going on over here? We got a good tray. Oh, such a nice tray. <laughs> well, what's for dinner? Okay, my only requirement. Can you anybody tell me what their favorite French food is? Croissants. <laughs> <laughs> anybody like French fries? Yeah. <laughs> that counts today. <laughs> there you go. Got a hedge maze set up, we gotta go right. All right, our selection of Remy merchandise is growing and along with the ears, we have cheese lights. Okay, probably can't see it, because it's really bright, but there's a flickering light inside each of these cheeses. Cheese lights. So you've got your Remy chef's hat. You can't really see it because of the light, but there's, yeah, and then Remy pops out of the top. Oh, that's good times. I like it. We also have this, which I'm super disappointed because I thought it was a hat. I was going to walk around with cheese on my head, but it's plushies. They go in their little cheese holes. It comes with two plushies. It's cool, but it's not a hat cool. We also have a wearable remote control Remy, which for 35 bucks, if it does what it says and isn't just like awful, is pretty awesome. But I've seen some of the little remote control stuff here before and I've been disappointed. So I don't want to $35 test it. You guys $35 test it. Let me know in the comments if this thing's worth buying for $35. And of course we have the motorized ride vehicles. They move around, they scoot, they do their own thing. The purple one already appears to be dying. Poor little guy. He's probably been working hard all past order preview. There's the La Crapare de Paris, which we will be checking out here shortly. But first, the main event, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. As you can see, they do have the queue set up for extended lines. Obviously today for pass holder preview, the line is not extended, so we're just making that loop and heading right on in. So basically as you enter, you go in through the Theater of Paris, which gives very Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway vibes, which is awesome because the technology from this ride in Disneyland Paris is what Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway was based on. Um, same technology, trackless ride. And then you somehow end up 
on a rooftop. I don't know if we got lost along the way, but we were ground level, now we're on a rooftop outside of Gastol, Gastos, Gastos. Gasto is up there. He was talking to us before, like when we were in the hallway, he was talking. And I don't think we're gonna be in here long enough for him to talk again. That was probably terrible, terrible shot for me. Uh, we don't think we're gonna be in here long enough for us to talk to us again because we're already whoop, scooting on through. The ride instructions are on this beautifully animated art palette. This whole room is just awesome. It's a little artist corner. Another piece of moving art to tell you how to get on. Remove packs before boarding. The meal is very, very interrupted. I'm not really sure what happened, but we were in an artist room and now somehow we're the size of a mouse. We're gonna jump into a bigger mouse and ride it around. Runaway Rats of the Resistance and um, opinions? It was really good. It was so cute. It was. We're outside. It was adorable. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I make jokes about it, but I, yeah, it was fun. At one point, I got champagne right in my eyeball. That was uh, interesting. Uh, I will say that 3D rides still suck with mask mandates, yeah. um, but you know, I get it. Safety first. The fog. Yeah, the fog, is, it, it, it did, it kind of. Um, so I did say earlier, and I don't know if I'm gonna add it in the video because I may not actually be able to do it, that I was gonna do a full ride through. Um, the line has quintupled since we got here. Maybe it's because we got here a little bit early and they let us in a little bit early, I don't know. Um, it's like five minute person wait time, but I think we waited about four. Yeah, so, so there may not be a full ride through, but I did get some of the stuff. Uh, but we do want to try the crap. Crap, crap. We're gonna eat some crabs. Crap, grapes. We're gonna go eat some crepes. Let's go check them out. So we are now in line for La Crap Arrive de Paris. Not really sure how this works for preview. We are in a line. I, I think this is to go inside. I don't, there's another line over there. I, I don't know. We're gonna figure it out together. So if this turns into an inside review, it does. All right, here we have our menu for La Crap Arrive de Paris. You got your entrees, uh, appetizer, side, soup du jour, soup of the day, salad, maison, I don't know, mixed greens, tomatoes, onion, whatever that is. Uh, the galettes, which are the buckwheat savory crepes. These feature your uh, proteins and more savory options. Uh, the normal dessert crepes. You got, ooh, some good looking ones there. The prefix menu, which comes with one of each and a choice of hard cider, soda, or juice. Oh, and the selection de cidre, which is hard ciders. Also, my terrible French pronunciations, I'm not even gonna apologize. Deal with it. So inside the menu is a little more expanded than the one outside. They do have a kids meal or kids menu, which comes with a choice of one smaller savory and one smaller dessert. Uh, they've got the full cider list if you want to pause and look through those. Wine, soda, blason, chant, hot, hot beverages, um, crepes, golettes, and the prefix menu, which uh, I think uh, we're going to try a couple of those. But yeah, there's the expanded inside menu. All right, 
right, so let's let you know what you're in store for with this review. We got two of the adult prefixes. Uh, the soup of the day is currently potato leek. They said it was amazing and that they've been out of it for the preview. So we got the poulet, which is chicken, cheese, and mushrooms. And one, whatever that is, I'm not even gonna try to do it even wrong, which is cheese, onions, and imported ham. We haven't decided on our dessert crepes yet, uh, but it does include one of those with the prefix menu. It also includes your choice of cider. We're gonna try the du. And then the only thing that it includes, uh, it also includes soda or juice. The sodas are Coke products and refillable. They're not the gourmet sodas or whatever this would be down here, the imported. Uh, that is not included. Uh, it's just the regular Coke products, which I got so I can get refills. Um, then we're gonna try the kids for these guys. Focus for these guys. We're gonna try the kids straight up cheese, which I'm assuming is gonna be like a grilled cheese only in a crap form. And the ham and cheese, which is like a ham and cheese, but in crap form. Also, the quality of this video is about to change because the camera's dying. Well, you can't see it anyway. It's a battery indicator, it's up there. Um, the camera's dying and I'm going to switch to my cell phone. Hooray. So this is the De Cider. If you look on the menu here, you've got your Brut, which is a very dry, a Demi Sec, which is half dry, half sweet, and the De, which is supposed to be sweet. The Rosé is not included in the prefix menu uh, because it's more, more expensive, as you can see. So, do you wanna try that? It's good. Is it good? Weird. Yeah. She described it as an angry orchard without apples. I, like, I don't. I don't know. That's what it tastes like. I don't know. I don't know how to describe that. It's very fruity. It's very cidery. I just don't know how to describe it. We also got a lovely vintage Coca-Cola, year 2021 to try. Mm. Magnifique. So, tell me again. How was it you described the cider? I couldn't taste the apples. No, no, no. What, what, how did you describe it? It was sweet. Yeah. Uh, what were your exact words? Angry orchard without apples. Without apples. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to... Yeah. I'm just going to leave this here on screen for a minute. 100% apples. What was it you couldn't taste again? The apples. I think if you're comparing it to Orchard, it looks a lot sweeter. And that's why. Like, I think there's an a big artificial apple flavor in a Orchard. Oh, there may be. But it's and this is this was like more like organic, pure. Real apples, More not, apples? Not, not fake apples, maybe that's why. The one that you couldn't taste? The apples? Alright, the potato leek soup has arrived. <laughs> oh, that looks leaky and potatoey. You sure gotta does. give it a try. Let us know. I have any idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Good. That's what I want to hear. I can taste the potato. It's very, like, it's not a very, it's, it's, I don't know how to describe the consistency. It's not thin, but it's not, like, super thick either. All right, so she tried, I gotta try. Uh, and I'm gonna apologize, because she just shaved my mustache, so this is gonna look messy. I'm really sorry. So, have you ever been eating and thought to yourself, man, I really wish I could drink mashed potatoes? That's what I'm getting from it. It's not bad. Not a bad thing. They're good. They're yummy. It's just a liquidy mashed potato. Enjoying your liquid mashed potatoes? No, I cannot taste that. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. All jokes aside, it is creamy. It's really good. You can tell it's like high quality. You can actually see the potato skin in there, um, but it's still really well done. The flavor is good. The kids who we thought wouldn't want to touch it have actually stolen mine. So I guess 
if they're enjoying it, that should tell you something, because they don't like anything at all, ever. And I like it so much that I miss it already. Like, it's over there. I can see it. I can see it off in the distance. And they're, they're just devouring my soup. All right, in order, we have the kids' bread cheese, which she has already said just smells like quesadilla. So go figure. That's children's palate right there. The kids' ham and cheese, which is very similar but with ham. The chicken, which I can't pronounce. Po po something chicken. And the savour. That one. Savoyard, Savoyard, say Savoyard. I don't know, Chef Boyardi. Uh, anyway, it's uh, imported ham, caramelized onions, cheese. I'm gonna tear into this thing. This looks so good. Like I, I can't wait to try it. All right. So, crepe and cheese. Gotta get some onion. Get a little bit of this imported ham. I did, I did a bad job but we're gonna try all this. Oh my God, that's so good. It's like all the flavors kind of like dance together and come together perfectly. The yeah, imported ham is like a prosciutto. And if you're you know, thinking Italian dishes, it's very similar to that. But it all really, it's good. Chef's kiss. She wants to try hers. She's getting mad at me because I'm talking. Impatient. How is it? You made a mess. I know. You cut it up into long, like a blob. It's really good. Is it really good? Did you get any chicken in there? Yeah. You got it all? I, I, I want to try. I got some mushrooms, some, mushroom, some chicken. How's yours? He's devouring it. Safe said that he likes it. What about you? What? You don't like it. So, there's always going to be one and it's got to be a kid, right? But in her defense, I did try hers with it being just cheese. It's that thin layer of cheese and then the crap on top. Um, it is. The buckwheat that they use for the actual breading. I, I'm so classless. I don't know how to actually describe all this. Uh, but what they use for the breading, the, it's like a buckwheat made. made. Um, it is. It's very overpowering because it's that thin layer of cheese. With ours, I do know that it's all the flavors that come together. And the cheese is a very small part of it. So with the kids, if they're thinking they're getting like a grilled cheese or a, like she said, smelled like a quesadilla, it's not that. The, the, the crap part overpowers the cheese part. So be aware of that. Something to keep in mind, especially with kids that are picky. Like her. All right, that was amazing. You can see those almost perfectly caramelized onions in there. She devoured hers. Between the three of them, they mostly did whatever there. Whew, that was good. It was super filling. But we have dessert crabs coming. Like, what am I gonna... We still have to eat dessert. I'll manage for you for this review. All right, starting in order again. We have the hazelnut chocolate, the sugar crepe, the... I don't know what it's called, but it's got banana. It's called the banana, I don't know. Minions, <laughs> minions over here. And then we have the palm, which is apple, which looks phenomenal. And if you are expecting like Nutella, then don't. This is an actual hazelnut with chocolate blended homemade spread. Good times. It it's, it's the same idea as Nutella, but it's homemade and tastes. Why are you picking that up? Well, go ahead. Use your fork, though, not your fingers. Gross. And he gonna eat a half a banana. -na -na. Banana. -na -na. Okay. 
I cannot stress to you how good this is. It's like a warm apple turnover mixed with apple top pancakes. Maybe a little apple french toast. All kind of rolled into one. And it's phenomenal. I'm sorry. Do I want to what? Why not? Tastes a little wood grain, maybe the table. Uh, but other than that, it's really good. Yeah, it's bananas and caramel. Like, you can't go wrong. I'm going to dig back into this apple thing. Though. It is all so good. So, final thoughts. Good. That's all I got. It was good. Those are thoughts. It was. It was really good. Um, so. Think, okay, so I think you have to like... So just don't come in here thinking you're going to get like a, I guess an American style crepe. It's not literally sweet. I don't know no. what I'm trying to say, but it's not, the crepes are sweet. The sweet ones are sweet. Yeah. But the savory ones are very savory, and an attempt to, attempt to make them more savory, that buckwheat that they yeah. use, it doesn't have that sweetness. So if you're yeah. expecting like, like Universal Studios, where they have the crepe wrapped all up in it, where it's a standard dessert crepe, but with yeah. Thanksgiving dinner wrapped inside. It's, that's not what it is. They do use buckwheat crepes for the savory ones, and it does give them a, sa a more savoriness. Words. I don't know. But everything was good. Just know what to expect. If you have children who are picky eaters and stare at phones when you're trying to talk to them, be aware that they will realize that buckwheat is probably not the best wheat for them that have grown up with American foods and quesadillas their whole lives. Yeah. Um, so, the desserts were phenomenal. Mine, like I said, it tasted like an apple pie, an apple turnover, an apple pancake, and an apple french toast, all like in one flavorful bite, and it was amazing. Her banana thing tasted like the table to me, but she said it was good, because she didn't drop hers on the table. It was really good, yeah. The kids ate theirs before I could get an opinion on them. So the hazelnut was good. Uh, like I said, don't expect Nutella. It's house-made hazelnut chocolate spread. Um, and the sugar one was just sugar. It was like the sugar cookie thing. Yeah. Phenomenal. Everything here was great. As far as the price goes, $33 per adult for the prefix menu. But you get a lot of food. That savory crepe was savory. The, the, the dessert one was full-size dessert. The soup was phenomenal. Um, for Disney, it's a lot of food for $33. Yeah. It was like a deal for what, if, what you got. Like if I was at a, I mean, no, I, I'm going to take that back. I was going to say if I was out somewhere, but there's nowhere else really that I can go out other than a French pa like French bakery. And even there, it's going to be about that much for that much food. I'm honestly glad. I don't think the window outside you can get the prefix when you came in. Uh, I, I don't, I don't think so. Okay. So I'm glad that we came inside. Yeah, I'm glad we waited in that line for you guys, for you guys, not for me. I just, I wanted you to know that this was a thing because I love all of my viewers, and not because I'm fat, and just ate a lot of food. If you're able to get in here, for the, if you're a pass holder and able to get in here for the preview, um, if we really didn't wait that long. We waited about maybe 20 minutes for table. Yeah, we and e even when you're not, I think this is gonna be, once they open, I think it opens October 1st, I think it's gonna be on the reservations. Yeah. Because it, it is, it's like a walk, it doesn't look like the kind of place it walks in. Now. Transitioning from that, I will say, here are my thoughts on the other side. So, as far as negatives go, it's a very small space, and for the quality of food that you've got, it's going to be very popular. So it's going to be very hard to get in once it's open full-time. The only other real negative that I see is this is opening in tandem with Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. They even have a Ratatouille crate, which I know Ratatouille is a dish, not a movie. It was a dish before it was a movie. I'm not dumb. I'm not cultured and I'm not classy, but I'm not that dumb. Um, but I would, I was almost expecting more integration, like maybe like a Remy theme or, you know, even something, something, you know, kind of like Tony's has the, Tony's Town Square has the fountain, they've got all the Lady and the Tramp pictures. Um, but these are just basic, like, we, we have a painting. 
So yeah, all of the paintings, all of the decorations in here are basic. Yeah, I just the point of that are basic like French street art, which is cool. It's awesome. If this was just the France Pavilion before they opened Rumi's Ratatouille Adventure, but the timing of it, I feel like. It's, I've seen Disney go like on from October 31st to November 1st from Halloween to Christmas overnight I feel like they knew this was coming one night they could have like decorated this to be a little more Ratatouille themed maybe some Remy pictures could just be me it, this may be third party owned I don't know but uh, we were talking what was she because she also was talking about she's technically a cast member I, I, again I don't know I don't know, but it was all good. It was all amazing. Thank you for joining us on this delicious journey that we took for you, not for me. Remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell, whatever it is. Do the kids want to say? Like. <laughs> subscribe. Hit that bell. They just, they get so much more adorable as they grow older. It's a little tweens. <laughs> But seriously, thank you all for watching. Thanks for joining us. Uh, as always, stay dorky. Stay dorky.